السلام علیکم آئی ہوپ ایوری ون از ڈرائنگ ویری ویل اوکے بچوں کچھ کوشچنس ہیں سبھی کے ریلیٹیڈ ٹو دا ٹیسٹ تو جو آپ کا ٹیسٹ ہو رہا ہے اٹ ووڈ بی آن ایٹینتھ مطلب نیکسٹ منڈے کو انشاءاللہ ہوگا اٹ ووڈ کمپرائز آف تھرٹی ٹو فورٹی ایم سی کیوز ٹوینٹی ٹو فورٹی ایم سی کیوز بیسیکلی تو صرف ایم سی کیوز ہی ہوں گے کن ٹاپکس میں سے ہوں گے یہ ایم سی کیوز ہوں گے آپ کے موسٹ پروبلی جو ٹاپکس ہم نے اسٹڈی کرنی ہے لاسٹ لیکچر میں وہاں تک جو اس ویک میں ہم پڑھ رہے ہیں وہ اس ٹیسٹ میں انکلوڈیڈ نہیں ہوگا یہ نیکسٹ ویک یا دو ویکس کے بعد دوبارہ کوشش کریں گے ٹیسٹ لینے کی ایک اس میں یہ سارے ٹاپکس انکلوڈیڈ ہوں گے اچھا سیکنڈلی بچے یہ پوچھ رہے تھے کہ کہاں سے ہمیں اسٹڈی کرنا چاہیے تو بچے جو سلائڈز میں لکھا ہوا ہوتا ہے وہ ریفرنس مٹیریل ہوتا ہے ٹھیک ہے وہ وہ ہوتی ہیں جو مسٹ نو ڈیٹیلز ہوتی ہیں مسٹ نو اچھا اب جو جنرل نالج ہے وہ اپنے سارا لینا ہوتا ہے بکس ہے ٹھیک ہے جو سلائڈ میں سلائڈ میں تو صرف اس کی ہیڈنگز لکھی ہوئی ہیں جسے تھوڑا سا میں ایکسپلین کر دیتا ہوں یا میں بتا دیتا ہوں بس تو اس لیے آپ کوشش کریں کہ بکس سے اسٹڈی کریں ٹھیک ہے تو آج کا اسٹارٹ کرتے ہیں باقی ٹیسٹ کے لیے زیادہ پریشان ہونے کی ضرورت نہیں ہے کمپیوٹر بیسڈ ہی ہوگا آفیسلی میں کوشش کروں گا کہ وہی سافٹ ویئر یا کسی ویب سائٹ پہ اپلوڈ کر دیا جائے جہاں پہ آپ کے پاس یہ موجود ہو کہ آپشنز آپ کے پاس آ جائیں اور آپ اس میں سلیکٹ کریں اور ایٹ دی اینڈ آپ کو خود سے اپنا اسکور پتہ چل جائے تو ایسا کچھ ہوگا اچھا خیر اپر لیم اسٹارٹ کرتے ہیں آج ہم نے اپر لیم اسٹارٹ کرنا تھا تو اپر لیم بنا ایٹمی پہلے چھوٹا سا انٹروڈکشن ایٹمی کا دین اپر لیم کی طرف چلتے ہیں سو اناٹمی جیسے ہم جانتے ہیں ہیومن اناٹمی از دا سائنس آف دا اسٹرکچر اینڈ فنکشن آف دا ہیومن باڈی اینڈ دا ریلیشنس آف اٹس ویریس پارٹس اوکے سو اناٹمی ان اناٹمی وی اسٹڈی ویریس پارٹس آرگنز اینڈ سسٹمس آف ہیومن باڈی اینڈ دیر ریلیشنس ود ایچ ادر گروس اناٹمی اٹ سیلف کین بی اسٹڈیڈ ان ٹو ویز ریجنلی اور سسٹمیٹکلی In uh, regional anatomy, we study a definite region of a body that can be classified into head, neck, back, uh, thoracic cavity, abdomen, pelvis, perineum, upper and lower limb. Okay, if we're going to do musculoskeletal system now, and in musculoskeletal system, we are starting upper limb. Upper limb, uh, in a way, is a topic which is studied in both regional anatomy as well as systemic anatomy. So, uh, we're covering both the aspects of upper limb. So, let's see what is in the upper limb. So, the skeletal system uh, generally provides the framework of our body. And it protects the viscera as well as helps in movements. On the other hand, the articular system consisting of joints provides the excess of movement as a liver muscular system provides the force for the movement. We've discussed all these things earlier. Now, uh, what is osteology? Osteology uh, is the study of human bones, of skeletal system in general. There are 206 bones in human body. I told you in the last lecture. Uh, the basic, uh, basically there are two parts in which the bones are divided into axial skeleton and uh, appendicular skeleton. So, uh, there the skeleton is given here. Okay, now our main topic. Let's get to our main topic. What is upper limb? Upper limb comprises of four parts. That is shoulder, arm, forearm and hat. It comprises, uh, it makes up upper limb. If we divide upper limb into further smaller parts, it would make uh, the following parts. First, there would be shoulder girdle or also known as pectoral girdle. Then comes the shoulder joint which is present on the shoulder girdle. Then there is arm or upper arm along with humerus. Then there is the elbow joint. After elbow joint there, are, there is the forearm comprising of radius and ulna. Then there is 
uh, wrist joint and then there is head hand is hand consists of three types of bones carpals metacarpals and digits okay so this is the main uh, composition of upper limb now if we look at the upper limb and uh, uh, we try to look into further details of it we may see that first of all the upper limb starts from the shoulder joint so in the shoulder joint uh if is we are studying regional anatomy we may divide the shoulder joint into three distinct regions okay into three distinct subdivisions first there is the pectoral region or the uh, front of the chest where the clavicle is located then there is the axillary region located inferiorly and then there is the posterior scapular region the main bones which make up this shoulder joint are this one number 2 that is clavicle and this one that is scapula the total uh, joints which are present here are two joints in total first one is this joint that is present this one that is present between the manubrium of the sternum and the clavicle this is known as sternoclavicular joint the second joint is present here this is known as acromioclavicular joint because the clavicle is making a joint with uh, the acromion process of the scapula now we come down to the upper arm upper arm consists of a single bone that is humerus and it starts from the uh, shoulder joint and at the elbow joint okay so there is not much detail to study here if you look at the forearm forearm starts from the elbow joint and at the wrist joint comprises of two bones the, that is radius and ulna the larger one the broader one is radius the uh, thinner one is ulna and uh, it basically has two joints one is the joint that is present between humerus and these two bones that is the elbow joint secondly the radius and ulna are all uh, also make up a joint together that is known as radio ulna joint uh, it restricts the movements uh, and it only allows uh, movement of radius ulna uh, on one plane that is rotation and that too to a very small extent now Uh, let's continue towards the hand in hand we can dis- uh, divide the hand into three distinct parts the first one is the wrist joint the second one is the uh, hand proper and the third one is the digits now let's look at the wrist joint what can we see in the wrist joint so in the wrist joint there are eight carpal bones and uh, these carpal bones uh, are basically joined on one side uh, uh, by radius and ulna and on the uh, distal side uh, they make joint with uh, the metacarpals hand proper consists of five metacarpal bones and uh, they Uh, on the proximal side they are uh, conjoined with the carpal bones on the distal distal side they make the uh, metacarpo phalangeal joints digits these ones they contain 14 phalanx phalanxes or phalanges uh, the thumb has two all the other fingers have three of these okay so the joints present here are the uh, metacarpophalangeal joints and the proximal and distal phalangeal joints what are these we'll study it when we'll study the hand 
so we've studied that the major regions which are present here are the pectoral girdle pectoral girdle is the shoulder joint then there is arm then there is forearm wrist palm uh, of hand and then there is uh, fingers palm of hand is also known as hand proper okay bones which are present in upper limb are scapula clavicle um, sternum humerus sternum is basically present uh, in the chest it is the breastbone but uh, clavicle is attached to this uh, sternum that's why we include it here okay so humerus radius ulna carpal bones metacarpal bones and phalanges joints which are present here are sternoclavicular acromioclavicular shoulder joint elbow joint radiocarpal joint mid carpal joint uh carpo metacarpal joint and uh, metacarpo phalangeal joint interphalangeal joints and carpo metacarpal joints of the thumb okay so now let's see which bones are present and we'll study some anatomy of the bones okay but so one more thing anatomy is a very very boring subject so uh, to understand the anatomy better we have to do dissection but under the current circumstances uh, we are conducting online classes so dissection is not possible so if you want to uh, study anatomy further or if you have an interest in anatomy and you want to revise these topics you may consult uh, the anatomy lectures which are given anatomical surface lectures which are given on youtube or in the natus atlas of anatomy if you uh, uh, observe the pictures from there or the videos from the youtube you may understand it better all the surfaces all these things these are very confusing and uh, very boring things okay so let's talk about bones of upper limb first we'll start with the shoulder girdle in shoulder girdle we talked earlier there are two bones which may make up the shoulder girdle what is one is clavicle the second one is scapula clavicle is conjoined with two other bones one is scapula at the acromion process and the other one is sternum at the meningeum so if we look at the clavicle what can we see uh we'll study further one in the slide okay in scapula there are many processes we'll study it further down the line so let's start with clavicle first so here we can see the clavicle clavicle is basically divided into three parts okay there is um if we divide it into three parts we can say uh the shaft of shaft of the clavicle this mid thing has a lateral one third part and medial two third parts and then there are two ends of the clavicle now let's see what is the clavicle okay so clavicle has basically two borders that is anterior border and the posterior border and two surfaces that is superior surface and inferior surface okay and if you look at the clavicle just a second from the medial side it is attached with sternum at the meningeum this is also known as the, known as the sternal end of the clavicle whereas on the lateral side it is attached with the acromion 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 process of the scapula so this one is known as the acromial end of the uh, clavicle and the joint between these is acromio clavicular joint 
okay uh, so this was the uh, this uh, there are two surfaces there is the superior surface then there is the inferior surface inferior surface is uh, convex in shape superior surface is concave moreover the anterior surface bulges out and the uh, posterior surface bulges in okay so there are some other points which you need to uh, know about the clavicle clavicle is a long bone but it ossifies via intramembranous ossification whereas all the other long bones they ossify via endochondral ossification moreover clavicle is the only long bone that is present horizontally all the other long bones are present vertically in the body so this was a small introduction of the clavicle now let's talk some more about the clavicle okay now let's talk about the attachments of clavicle so as i've told you earlier there are uh, four sorry there are two ends of the clavicle lateral and medial and lateral side it is attached with the scapula acromion process on the medial side it is attached with the sternum so these are two joints of the clavicle now different muscles uh, they have they have attachments with the clavicle as we can see on the lateral side of the clavicle the anterior border is the origin of the deltoid muscle moreover uh, the posterior border here it is the insertion of the trapezius muscle what is origin what is insertion i told you earlier origin is from where uh, the muscle originates or the joint uh, at which the muscle uh, does not have any effect does not move that muscle whereas insertion is where the uh, muscle attaches and uh, at which joint the muscle affects the movement of that joint so anterior surface lateral end is the origin of deltoid anterior surface posterior border is the uh, sorry post, uh, posterior border is the insertion of trapezius muscle then if we see at the medial end at the medial side anteriorly uh, there is the origin of sterno uh, sorry pectoralis major muscle and sternocleidomastoid muscle pectoralis major muscle is the main muscle that is present in a uh, near our chest cavity so here yeah, these two muscles originate then here there is a structure that is known as subclavian groove here there is the attachment of the uh, subclavius muscle okay the only questions that tend to arise from the clavicle are uh, uh how many ossification centers are present in clavicle so remember that there are two ossif two primary ossification centers and one secondary ossification center that is present in clavicle then the other question is 
uh, which one of the following is the most commonly fractured bone in the body the answer would be clavicle there then which bone is most commonly fractured if one falls down with the arms outstretched the answer would be clavicle then there is a question which is the most common site of fracture uh, of clavicle so it is the uh, junction between the two curvatures of the bone here where the fracture takes place most commonly is there any intervention that is needed after the fracture of clavicle so there is no intervention needed the bone comes to its place by itself and heals by itself okay this is the common uh, pose that leads to the injury of clavicle fracture of clavicle outstretched hands falling on your outstretched hands has a major chance of fracturing the clavicular bone okay now uh, here there is a small test uh, you have to tell which one is the medial end and which one is the lateral end of the clavicle lateral end of the clavicle so as we can see the medial end of the clavicle is somewhat uh, plain whereas the uh, lateral end of the clavicle is curved so remember that the this end is the medial end and here the clavicle attaches with the medubrium of the sternum whereas the lateral end is curved and here a chromium process of the scapula makes, makes a joint with the clavicular bone So this was it for the clavicle. Now let's start with the scapula. Scapula is a thin bone that is present posterior laterally in the thoracic cage. It has two surfaces, three borders and three angles. Okay. So the surfaces of the scapula are the coastal surface and the dorsal surface. Coastal surface is the surface uh, that is present medially and forward. Whereas the dorsal surface is present laterally uh, and backward. Okay. So, this one is the medial surface or the coastal surface. This one is the lateral surface. Now, let's discuss the borders of the um, scapula. There are three borders. One thin and short superior border. One lateral border that is thick and the upper end makes up the shoulder joint it makes up the infraglenoid tubercle basically here is the infraglenoid tubercle this is the glenoid cavity and then there is the medial border this is a thin border located medially there are three angles of the scapula one superior angle that is covered by the trapezius muscle one inferior angle covered by the latissimus dorsi and one lateral or glenoid angle that is uh, broad and contains the glenoid fossa okay now uh, let's take a look at the processes different processes that are present in present around here okay so the first one is here this is the acromion process of the 
scapula. Here the axomioclavicular joint uh, is present. The clavicle makes a joint with this process. The second one is the coracoid process. Third one is the glenoid cavity or glenoid fossa where the uh, where the shoulder joint uh, is present. Then there is the subscapular fossa. The lateral border of the scapula as you can see here. This is the inferior angle. This is the medial border of the scapula and this is the superior angle. Then in the last there is suprascapular notch. So as you can see the lateral border, the medial border, the lateral border is broader, the middle border is thin, it is straighter, uh, continues from the superior angle till the inferior angle. Whereas the lateral border is broader, continues from the, uh, no, the superior part of it forms the infraglenoid tubercle just below the uh, glenoid cavity and it is present up until the inferior angle. So this was a scapula from the uh, posterior side. Now let's look at the anterior view of the scapula. Okay, so if we uh, look at the, sorry, that was the anterior, this one is the posterior view. So here you can see there is superior angle then supraspinous fossa this is the spine of the uh, scapula so anything that is present above it is supraspinous below it is infraspinous this is spine then infraspinous fossa medial border inferior angle lateral border glenoid fossa or glenoid cavity and acromion process now this is the lateral view okay from the side you can see acromion process the spine of scapula glenoid fossa infraspinous fossa inferior angle subscapula scapula fossa and coracoid process Coracoid process is present on uh, superiorly uh, on the scapula. Here, two ligaments originate. One is coracoacromial ligament that connects the coracoid process with the acromion process, and the other one is coracoclavicular ligament that attaches coracoid process of the scapula with the uh, uh, clavicle. It basically helps in keeping the shoulder joint stable. If we look at the muscles of the scapula, let's start from the there is one muscle that is supraspinatus. Supraspinatus is called a supraspinatus because it originates above the spinous process of the uh, scapula so as you can see above the spine so supraspinatus muscle infraspinatus originates below the uh, spine spinous process so it is known as infraspinatus uh, muscle then there are uh, some uh, insertions of the muscles there is the insertion of uh, or insertion on the medial border of uh, rhomboid rhomboids major and minor and levator scapularis muscle then uh, you can see origins of uh, teres major and teres minor from the lateral border of the scapula and deltoid arises from the lower border of spinous process or spine of the scapula
so if we look at the uh, anterior surface subscapularis muscle originates from the sub subscapular fossa triceps and biceps brachii muscles of the arm uh, also have origins in the scapula they are located on the uh, uh, lateral surface of the scapula the long head of the biceps brachii muscle originates from supraglenoid tubercle that is above the glenoid cavity whereas triceps is from the infraglenoid uh, tubercle there are some other minor muscles which originate from here those are coracobrachialis uh, serratus interior etc let's see if we have some clear pictures of those no. ok so the major muscles that arise from scapula are given here uh, one large muscle that is uh, that originates from scapula is the uh, so that is inserted into scapula is the serratus interior muscle serratus interior insert is inserted uh, at the medial border of the scapula as you can see here serratus interior muscle is known as serratus interior because it has many serrations it is in the shape shape of serrated membrane such as uh, as uh, have you seen a saw as there are v v shaped serrations on the saw the same is the shape of the serratus interior muscle if this muscle gets damaged uh, due to uh, damaged nerve supply it results in winged scapula as you can see here this is the clinical condition that arises after that okay so the questions that tend to arise from the scapula are related to uh, the different uh, muscle origins and insertions apart from that uh, I don't think you will get many questions from the scapula the main uh, bones and muscles from where they will ask you questions are from the humerus from radius and wrist joint these things forearm and arm because they are, these are more important clinically so the questions tend to arise from these uh, more so we'll pay more attention to those topics this scapula and clavicle you just need to uh, memorize some points from, from these like in the scapula you have to memorize the surfaces the processes of the uh, scapula okay so this marks the end for today I guess actually what you must like anatomy jabam pade hota na to ye sare ka sara rata ye do tarah se samajha sakti hai either aapke haath mein bone pakda di jaye aur aapko sara samjhaya jaye ki iske anterior hai fir posterior hai ye iski surfaces hai ye sab kuch hai ab masla ye hai ki waise ho nahi sak raha kyunki hamare paas dissection hol to hai nahi ab distant learning ki agar baat kare online classes ki baat kare to usme aisa ruka suka hi padhaya ja sakta hai so you have to understand it on your own but jab aap ye topics padhenge wahan se book se to aapko beta samajh aa jayegi use bd surasia for it so that you can understand it more clearly theek hai okay bachcha signing off agar kisi ka koi question hai to puch sakta hai and office